You know, this month has a lot of like, this is this awareness month. And so we're going to talk about one of the this awareness month. It's a melanoma skin cancer awareness month. And we have a representative from MU Healthcare in the studio with us to talk about this and some screening services that are coming up shortly. And this is Dr. Emily Smith. Nice to meet you. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. So um, let's talk about the screening. First of all, what is the uh, what is the screening? When is it going to occur and what will happen there? Yeah, so next Thursday at Ellis Fischel Cancer Center on the first floor, we'll have a skin cancer screening open to the public. It's from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Um, all, anyone is welcome to come in. We do recommend reservations, but you're welcome to come in, and all of your exposed skin will be examined by an MU dermatologist or healthcare professional. And if, so, go ahead. Yeah, if any concerning lesions are identified, then we make. Um, we find a way to get you seen by a dermatologist quickly to have the lesions addressed. So you just look. I mean, by looking at skin, you can probably tell whether somebody is going to be needing further attention or not. Absolutely. So just by looking, we can tell if a, a specific spot is concerning, but we can also tell if someone has risk factors that might um, suggest they need a, a good full skin check. By what are some of those risk factors? So certainly long, um, lots of sun exposure over a lifetime. So if we see lots of sunspots or um, wrinkling or if we can elicit a history from a patient that they've had lots of sun exposure throughout their lifetime or have used tanning beds, um, certainly a family history of melanoma, one of our more deadlier forms of skin cancer, would suggest that a patient might need a full skin check. How much of a myth is it that people who are dark complected don't have to worry about skin cancer? It is um, not entirely a myth. Certainly, people who have more natural pigment are more naturally protected from sunlight, but anyone can make skin cancer, absolutely. From the fairest of the fair to the darkest of the dark, we see skin cancer in all skin types. What makes you cringe as a doctor who specializes in this? And I I would say probably those who regularly use tanning beds. Absolutely. That's one of our number ones. Tanning beds are a known carcinogen, meaning they're classified by the World Health Organization as a device that causes cancer. So we. So know why do they, they still exist? That's a great question. We are working really hard at the state level right now to at least ban their use for minors. Currently, they're restricted. You have to have parental permission, but we're working to ban use um, for all minors. So how's that going? We're in. It's in the works. It is in the works. Now is that in in Jefferson City? In Jefferson City. So how what what have other states done? Are some, do some states have truly restrictive? Absolutely. Rules? There are sixteen states now that ban tanning bed use in minors, um, and then most states have restrictions whereby parents have to consent for their children to use the tanning. Bed. Is the one time use of a tanning bed enough to raise the issue of skin cancer, or are you talking those who go weekly or I, one I, I, time? Really? One exposure to a tanning bed, especially before the age of 18, increases your risk of skin cancer substantially. But melanoma, again, our most deadliest form of skin cancer, increases your risk of 59% just um, having tanning bed exposure. So, When I ask you what makes you cringe, that would be mm-hmm. one thing. I was also wondering, because I think I'm, I'm trying to remember if I heard this from friends of mine And I don't mean to make this a gender thing, but oftentimes it's females other than males who say on that first sunny, hot day, I'm going to lay out and I'm going to get as much sun as I can to kick off my tan for the summer. Absolutely. So the concept of a base tan, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's that's another one of our cringeworthy um, things as well. No. So anytime you get a tan, that's a sign that your skin has experienced damage from the sun. So um, you know, getting a base tan just means that you are, your skin is experiencing chronic um, damage from the sun. And that damage is cumulative. So the longer you stay tan, the more damage you're accumulating. But it's hard to break the impression that tans are attractive. Absolutely. And I think there has been a culture shift in the last perhaps 10 years or so, whereby pale is becoming more accepted. Pale is the new tan, some people will say. But, um, you know, there are healthy and safe ways to get a tan. Self-tanners are safe. They give individuals the glow they desire without the harmful effects. And what is that? Because you're talking to someone who <laughs> <laughs> never thought. You're talking about the spray-on or spray tans or rub-on tans, tans or, or something lotions. like that? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Well, see, I'm, I'm, I've never worried much about this because I don't lay out. But there are times where either working in the yard or working at some other event where you find yourself exposed to really bright sunshine and then tops of the ears, 
get sore, tips of the nose might. I've even had it at times where the back of my hand really has just been sensitive to the touch or where maybe maybe a, a, I'm wearing short socks and the slacks come down and leave just, I mean, it's amazing the power yeah. of that. I mean, you see that all the time though. Absolutely. We're getting exposure to the sun throughout our our you know, working days when we're driving in a car, even the sunlight that comes in through the window glass. When we're playing golf, when we're out at the farmer's market, playing with our kids outside, we're getting exposure. So we really do recommend being conscious of that and getting a sunscreen on at least your exposed skin every day. And if you make it part of your daily routine, then you don't have to think about it when you're getting that incidental exposure. So what would you say as far as you brought up sunscreen? I was going Mm -hmm. to ask about that. What do you look for? What do you advise? So certainly you want to wear a broad spectrum sunscreen. So when you're looking at the label, you want it to make sure that it covers both types of the sun's rays, UVA and UVB. We recommend for daily use wearing SPF 30 or greater. You can get these in just run-of-the-mill daily face moisturizers. So they're a little bit more um, nice and easy to put on. And then if you're going to be outdoors at a sporting event or swimming, um, then we recommend using SPF 50 or higher. Mm -hmm. How high does it go up? I think I saw something earlier this week, like an SPF 100. Yeah, and it does. And there was, um, you know, there has been some push to say that perhaps anything over SPF 50 really doesn't make that much of a difference. But we know that we don't apply sunscreen the way that we're supposed to. It's actually quite challenging to apply it correctly enough to get the SPF that's on the bottle onto your skin. Okay, well, tell me how to apply it. I I didn't know that you could apply it incorrectly. I know, right? So if you're using a cream, we recommend a shot glass full of sunscreen Mm. should be applied to your entire body, and you have to reapply it every two hours, Mm. more frequently if you're swimming or sweating, because it does degrade in the sunlight and it it wears off with uh, water exposure. So that... hmm. Okay. Sunscreen's hard work. It is, I suppose, every two hours. Even though though the directions on the sunscreen say it's water repellent or waterproof? Absolutely. So even if it's water resistant, that means it lasts a little bit longer, but you still have to reapply every two hours. I don't know how to ask, what is the frequency of skin cancer? I don't know how many will get that, if that's a fair question or not, because it's it's going to determine whether you're outside much or not. So skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States, and one in five Americans will have a skin cancer in their lifetime. Hmm. Um, Certainly the incidence of melanoma has gone up substantially in the last 10 years, particularly in Missouri as well, Um, likely due to tanning bed exposure and and also our, you know, aging population. But it's very, very common. And and even our, you know, intermittent sun exposure that we had as children playing out in the summer months getting burnt and then tan – um, that's more than enough to increase your risk for developing. Is there a cumulative effect? Because some people would say, well, as a child, I did do that. And mm-hmm. I can remember if, if very infrequently when I would get maybe, and I'm, I'm not speaking for myself necessarily, I'm speaking for a lot of people, maybe have sunscreen on. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem to bother me. And now I'm in my 30s or 40s or 50s and nothing's ever happened. Are there warning signs or is there something that would say, even though you've escaped that many decades and haven't had an issue yet, you still might? So in general, it's just good to keep an eye on your skin. So we recommend everyone check their skin over once a month. Do a head-to-toe exam. Get to know your spots and dots. And if something is changing, so if it's changing week to week or month to month, it all of a sudden is bleeding for no reason. It's getting bigger. It has irregular borders. The colors are changing. Then those are things that are warning signs that should be seen by a dermatologist. What are, at certain stages of life, um, some of us say these are aging spots. Or wisdom spots, we like to say. Well, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to have to adopt that better than what I've been calling it. But yeah, I, I, you know, it seems like well, it just goes along with age Absolutely. sometimes. Is that true or false? It is very true. So there are a handful of normal spots that we all acquire as we have more birthdays. And a majority of them, 99% of them are going to be non-cancerous and, and benign and fine. So once you know I've had this spot for 10 years, it hasn't changed, that's a, a sign that it is probably an okay spot. So what do we need to end with? What should we say to leave in people's minds when it comes to thinking, first of all, whether they might show up at the clinic uh, at that uh, screening event or not, or what they might think as they head into another outdoor season where the sun is going to be something that they're going to have to deal with? I guess just to reinforce the point that skin cancer is common, but it is it is preventable. And when it is caught early, it is curable. Um, unfortunately, we see too many cases that are not caught early, that are caught late. And at that point, it can be 
life-threatening or deadly. So keeping an eye on your skin, alerting a dermatologist or your primary care physician if you have a concerning lesion, and really trying hard to protect your skin. The goal is not to burn, but try not to tan as well. So sunscreen, protective clothing, wide-brimmed hats, sunglasses. You've got to live your life, and we all love being outdoors, but just be conscious of the effects that the sun is having on your skin. All right, and if you say somebody is worshiping too much the the heavy tan, you could say, Pale is okay. Pale is okay. All right. Doctor, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Again, more information is available, I think, about the uh, the uh, skin cancer screening clinic, probably at MU Healthcare. Absolutely. Alice Fischel Cancer Center. All right. Dr. Emily Smith has been our guest. This is Melanoma Skin Cancer Awareness Month. You can find more information, as she said, through the Ellis Fischel Cancer Hospital site or MU Healthcare. It's News Talk 1400 KFRU.